Okay, so today we are going to do the cheap art supply challenge. These are some watercolor pencils I bought at the dollar store. That is a um, a watercolor palette I bought at the dollar store and that mechanical pencil I'm using right now was about 50 cents. It's a kid's mechanical 1.3 millimeter pencil. So I'm laying out the foundation of the drawing in the mechanical pencil first and <clears throat> the trick here is really going to be to try to get some kind of value out of these pigments which is pretty tricky. The the dollar store, for you people who are not American, is an American thing in which anything that you buy costs a dollar. So that's not a lot. It's like, a, I don't know, three quarters of a euro or something like that. Like, it's not a lot of money. And um, what I did is my kids used those paints, the watercolor paints, and then... I replaced the orange and yellow with some gouache and um, then I, I, I did it because they ran out of the orange and yellow and I went without the white because they had like also run out of the white. So the six watercolor pencils also came from the, the dollar store as well and they were a dollar, not a dollar each, but a dollar for all six. And I'm still working with the pencil here. It looks like I'm blocking in the surrounding area. So the watercolor, I'm starting to realize as I start to use it, is really bad. I guess you get what you pay for in the department of watercolor because this was just uh, not working out. It's it's really cheap. The the, the gouache stuff that I, I put in there that came from those plastic tubes, it was like made in China back in the 90s and it was like dried out and then I kind of reconstituted by rehydrating it and I put the orange and the yellow in there so that I would have a complete set of watercolors. So this is absolutely like the cheapest I could do and still have them be watercolors. I mean really you only need a pencil to draw and I think anything beyond a pencil is like really helpful but not absolutely necessary so that's where these things come in I, it's very hard to get any kind of actual really serious pigment down with them I think at one point I just got so frustrated with the watercolor kit that I I uh, well you'll see in a second here um, so the brush I'm using is a like about a one dollar brush. It, it came in a craft kit of five. It's not a watercolor brush. It's just a brush. Uh, the um, I have two other brushes I use in this demo, and the other two brushes are are both also like they were free in in uh, some kind of kit that I got. Each brush came free with the kit. So I, I went as cheap as I could with the brushes. And now I'm I'm deciding, oh, this watercolor isn't working that great. So I, I think I'm going to have to go over it with some graphite just to darken certain areas. So I'm using the mechanical pencil to darken, darken these areas that I want to add uh, value to. Pretty soon, I'm probably going to end up attempting to use the watercolor pencils. The problem with those is they didn't really, they were kind of high key colors. They didn't have any natural colors in there. They didn't have a white. They didn't have any browns. Um, they were just like your, your six primary and secondary colors. So there was that issue of like, okay, if I want to, I don't know, it was just hard to manage the watercolor pencils and they're also very thin like the points on the pencils and stuff were really thin and you just couldn't get a lot of I want to say that the, the the binder and the pigment didn't allow the pigment to lay down very heavily okay so let's take a minute to talk about anteaters and why I would choose to do an anteater for a subject 
Today, I was talking to my friend, um, also on YouTube, Cyan Inc. She does a lot of streams. And we got into this discussion about anteaters and aardvarks. And I truly thought that the anteater was the same thing as the aardvark. And apparently, the aardvark lives in Africa and the anteater lives in South America. They're completely different. And the anteater... Um, eats ants, and so does the aardvark, and that's where the similarity ends. The anteaters are actually in the same larger family as sloths, which they don't really look much like sloths, but their claws kind of look slothy. So I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't know that they were they were related to sloths. And um, let's see, what else did I find out about anteaters? So there's an aardvark in there too, like the aardvarks. I'm going to have to draw an aardvark, of course, because you can't just stop with an anteater if you have a discussion about both of them. We had anteaters at the Philadelphia Zoo, and I do think they're really cool. And this one had like an awesome stripe, which I hope I kind of get. Like it was really hard to get the higher key elements of this drawing because there was so much difficulty laying down the pigment and um here I go with the claws I'm trying to get those right and I'm like frantically dabbing at the tiny bit of white left going oh I need the white but it's not working too good I had no idea of this but did you know that the giant anteater can weigh up to 86 pounds uh, the male anteaters are 10 to 20% heavier than the females. Um, they can live up to 26 years captive. Um, so they're kind of large and long-lived. And they say they walk on their knuckles the giant anteater is distributed in central america and south america east of the andes it extends as far south as uruguay and northwestern argentina this species specializes in eating large ground dwelling ants such as carpenter ants in the venezuelan llanos and usually ignores termites leaf-eating ants army ants and other species with large jaws so they don't really want to get eaten they want to eat the ants that's why. Um, prey colonies are located by scent, open but not demolished by the powerful claws, and cropped on average for about a minute. As few as 140 ants may be taken from a single colony on any day. Ants can revisit colonies within their home range at regular intervals and avoid over-exploitation of their food. They detect their prey by smell, and they have really long tongues, and they're really, really strange looking, but kind of cool. I like them. So here's this one. It looks like it's stalking down there to get an ant, and it's pretty cool. I It had a beautiful, rich orange to its coat, which I wasn't really able to show in this as well as I wanted to, but I think that you kind of get the hint by the end um, of some of the contrast in its coat and how elegant it looks. Oh yeah, I reached the point where you could see there that I actually separated the lid of the watercolors from the, um, from the watercolor palette because you couldn't open the watercolor palette fully. You could only open it like two thirds of the way. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get to the paint. So I just snapped the lid off because it was really frustrating me. Oh, there's the head. It came into focus here. And now I'm just like trying to get the details. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do about this background area here? Because normally I'm used to fairly opaque watercolor. So I just put like a white over things to highlight and now it looks like I'm gonna have to learn how to use that masking fluid and stuff like that which you know isn't like I guess I would have to just learn how to paint a little bit more with the cheap watercolors because I end up having to go over some of these spaces and kind of like scrub on the paper a little bit which this is only 100 pound mixed media paper it was in fact on sale when I bought it it's a it's a Canson um, and if any of you 
have seen any of my other videos, I guess there's one coming up soon where I talk about this more extensively, but I'm not a fan of spiral bound anything because when you're trying to work on the right hand side of the page and you're using spiral bound, um, the spiral kind of gets in the way of my arm, at least for me, which is why I sort of ended up like skipping that section of the page. You can, you can see how I left like an inch of space on the right hand side of the page. So since I've given up really using the Cansons as actual sketchbooks because I'm so frustrated by the spiral bindings, um, I decided to use them for different drawings that I do demos like this. And <clears throat> I think this is a great challenge because I really like it that anyone can draw and you don't need a lot of stuff and you don't need the fancy equipment and the Sennelier watercolors. I mean, these are beautiful things and it's great to have them if you have the opportunity to have them. But to produce an acceptable drawing of something and to have it look good and be something that you want it takes a little more patience and time and it takes a little more effort like to mix the paint and stuff but i think at the end of the day it's great for everyone to see that this is a possibility that they can go to the dollar store and buy a few things and you know get spend the bulk of the money like if you if you have ten dollars you can get sufficient stuff to do some nice artwork it it's not going to be um, you know, it may not be everything you totally want, but it's going to be something that you can get a lot, you can get a lot and do a lot with it for not much money. And I, I like that about painting. I like that it's, it's kind of open-ended. Like, it's great that we can get these really nice things that can make our lives easier and lay down pigments that are incredibly luminous and beautiful. But it's also great that you can just be someone who is on minimum wage or whatever and do this in your spare time and you don't have to make a fortune to do it. So here I start using black in the background because I'm trying to get the form of the actual anteater to stand out a little bit. And I'll, although up until this point I was really trying to avoid the black because I felt like it really was going to kind of flatten the drawing a little bit. Something that I've learned about watercolors over the years is that the black isn't, it doesn't for some reason show as much depth or bring out things in a drawing the way, the way that like mixing a black out of color would do. So I'm almost done with the speeded up part of the video here. What I'm going to do next is show you the finished drawing and kind of critique it myself and let you know what I would have liked to see myself. Okay, so here she is, the final product. Maybe not my favorite picture I've ever drawn of an anteater, and it is in fact the only mm. picture I've ever drawn of an anteater, but that said, I think considering I was using one dollar paint and one dollar uh, watercolor pencils and a 50 cent pencil and that was it it came out pretty well um, stay tuned for the next segment in things that eat ants that will be the aardvark and possibly after that we may cover the pangolin because they're really cool they're like armored plated anteaters anyway y'all have a nice day and we will see you on the flip side